Cause I'm the data guy, making bytes fly high, diving deep into the data, reaching for the sky, from ETLs to data lakes and pipelines that don't break. Tune in, hang on, and let's make data great. Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today, I got a video for you on something that's pretty simple, but really powerful that I've been seeing a lot. Um, and I just think it's really smart. So I wanted to bring the information to the masses. Um, and that is using dynamic task mapping to manage your API queries um, dynamically. So what I mean there is let's say, you know, you're querying one API endpoint for 10 different customers or for 10 different regions to get their information. Um, and so what you might've done historically is, you know, you're passing a list of that um, into a DAG that then, you know, runs, pulls all those API requests sequentially, uh, maybe in a for loop um in one big task um or you have multiple dags and you're generating the, and you use you know hey this customer a is customer a dag and customer b is customer b dag and you know all of them manage their own api requests independently um and so what i'm going to show you today is something that kind of combines the best of both worlds there um, and uses dynamic task mapping um to let you query an api for however many different parameters you would like um so what you can do is, and there's many different ways you can do this. What I'm going to show is just kind of writing into the code um, and saying, hey, you know, use these two countries. But what you can also do is pass a um, JSON parameter file or just, you know, type it into um, the DAG at runtime. I'll show you how to do that. Don't worry. Um, and say, hey, I want to get an API. Uh, I want to pull API information about customer information for these seven customers. It'll create seven different tasks uh, for that uh, seven different task instances. Uh, run them all in parallel, um, and then process. And you can set up a parallel downstream process as well to do any transformations. Um, everything in parallel and all within one DAG for high visibility. Because um, obviously, you know, you can click into any task instance and look at the individual um, instances and say, hey, you know, I want to look at this customer's what happened here. So you still get the visibility of having them all be separate DAGs or be separate tasks. Um, but this way, you can do it dynamically, so you don't have to, you know, hard code say, hey, I have eight tasks that take these eight. Um, different API endpoints, those can be generated at runtime. So, you know, each day you could come in and say, hey, I want to know this many customers or this many customers um, and not have to worry about actually changing any of your code. You're just popping in different parameters and uh, the dynamic task mapping takes care of the rest. Um, so without further ado, sorry for the preamble. I just want to really explain what's going on here um, before I get into it. Um, let's get into it uh, and actually show you how this works. Um, so what I'll do here is first, I'm going to just import my uh, DAG decorator. So DAG, task group, task, uh, pendulum date time for good date time. Requ oh, wait, sorry, I'm on the wrong. So sorry, keep going. Um, so here I also have the requests uh, library just so I can actually pull make API requests. Um, then I have the S3 create object operator so I can upload them in S3. You know, obviously you don't have to do this part, but I'm just trying to make a real use case. Um, and also JSON so that I can pass uh, or receive the JSON object that's returned um, by this API endpoint. Um, and then you also, if you're using DAG parameters at runtime, you also need to date JSON to actually ingest those parameters. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll just set some global variables here. Um, so just S3 bucket, AWS connection ID, and then the two countries um, that I'm going to be pulling this API for. Um, so basically all I'm doing here is using um, API requests to hit this endpoint of public holidays and tell me the public holidays for each of these input countries. Um, so here I have the US and China. Um, and what I would, and this is the part where you would replace this by like saying, hey, you know, read whatever DAG uh, variables were put into the parameter. Um, but I'm just hard coding it because it's easier to show you all. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to define my DAG as we always do. Um, so here, just calling it uh, DAG ID, pa uh, task group, mapping, <laughs> whatever, uh, putting some tags on it. None of that's really important. Uh, just kind of talking through it. Um, and then calling a dynamic or task group mapping use case. And then what we're actually going to do is use a task group um, to contain the uh, different API, the API requests and transfer and transformations and then writing it into S3. Now, the reason we're doing that is because you can actually dynamically map over task groups. So instead of me having to dynamically map the same task or 
different task twice um, and have to deal with, you know, hey, passing these mapping parameters down to here. What I can actually do is just dynamically map into a task group and then run that task group um, for each of those countries. Um, so here, when I'll show you how I initialize this down there, but it's just a dot expand method on a task group where I say, hey, um, I'm going to have this first task, which is going to execute that API request, return my JSON, um, and, and just dump it. Um, so then I'll just query that for the next task. So it's gonna be stored in a uh, XCOM database. Then we'll have extract holidays for that country, um, saving it as holidays info. And then we're gonna write those holidays to S3. Um, so again, just for whoever's holiday that is, so holidays info referenced by this S3 create objects, that's how the relationship um, that data gets there. And then just send the dependencies as well explicitly. Um, so after we've done that, we then will just have a simple downstream task that's going to print out the result of a specified specific task in a map task group. Um, and this is just, if you want to pull from a specific map task, um, this is just an example of how you do that. So let's say, just want to get the information from, you know, this, the sec or the country two. So map index is one and give me that return value. Um, this is totally optional to have in your code. This is just kind of, so I, sorry, I'm going to run that in Python. Um, just when I was troubleshooting, I can make sure that this is actually working. Um, and then what we'll do finally is use our TG object to dot expand on our fetch and save holidays task group. Um, so here we're using dot expand method just as we would with a task um, and passing the li this list of two countries within there. Um, so what that means is your instead of running it just once, you're running it for two different countries. Um, so super simple. And then what we'll do here is also set the dependencies and then task group use case to find the DAG and we're off the races. Um, so now what I'll do is I'll kick it over to the Airflow UI, show you all what this looks like in practice, uh, just so you have kind of a visual representation of it as well. Um, but that's really all the information you need. You're just using the dot expand method, pass that either into a task group or a task that's performing your API requests, um, and then doing that dynamically. So you don't have to worry about hard coding, you know, the exact number of tasks or any specific values. So here in our Airflow UI, we have our task group mapping and pulling use case. So after we're in the DAG, if I go over to the graph view, um, you can see here, we have fetch and save holidays, two tasks, you can see this extract holidays is run twice, uh, then our write holidays is run twice, then printing that holidays in country two is also run. So this part extraneous, but if you want it, you can, you can also incorporate it in yours. And so if you want to look at a specific task instance, what you can then do is go to map tasks, um, and you can look at the task log for that particular map instance. So you can see here we have local name uh New Year's Day. So these are some of the uh, public holidays we pulled from China. Um, and so really, really useful. Um, I really love this. You know, it's really a, what, what more needs to be said. Am I right? Um, so that's all I had to show you there. Please check it out for yourself. Try it out um, and just make some of your DAGs more resilient um, and just more dynamic because that's what it's all about, being dynamic. Um, so anyways, that's all I have for you today. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you have an idea for another video you'd like to see, drop it in the comments below, and we're working on the schedule. Um, so have a good one. Data Guy out.